to everybody and welcome to Central Florida's Polk County and Sports Central. I mean, yep. what a day to be alive in Central Florida. Beautiful day outside. In fact, uh, it's too bad we're not out on the golf, golf course. Of course, so. would that be nice <laughs> or what? But, uh, you know, and then you think about the snowstorm up in the Northeast and, yeah, and we're we both we're, been there. We both been there, and now we're here, and that's why we're here. And welcome to our first segment of Sports Central. We want to thank the folks at Travel Lodge Lakeland North for sponsoring our first segment. We got a great guest with us. Oh, it's going to be fantastic, everybody. We've got uh, some very special guests. We have Keith Bearfield, and then you did a special interview with yes. David Van Sleet, who's yes. the coach, the general manager of the Wounded Founder. Warriors yeah. amputee softball team. And then, of course, uh, the one, the only, Bill Tinsley. We're gonna be talking about the Detroit Tigers. Spring training coming up, everybody, four days away when pitchers and catchers show up. <clears throat> It's hard to believe. It, oh. I mean, Fernandez. it was Thanksgiving, then it was Christmas, and now, you know, we're through that. We'll be New Christmas Year's again. You just never it's know. It's baseball coming up. So. Well, thanks so much for joining us, everybody. Thanks so much for joining us. Well, welcome aboard. Wow, new coach in town, new sheriff in town. <laughs> Keith Bearfield coming all the way from Oklahoma, Evangel. University College, University? Evangel University in Springfield, Missouri. Then I was at Northwestern Oklahoma State in okay. Alva, Oklahoma. Yeah, so sort of a little dilexia of uh, thought there. Yeah, but that happens <laughs> for you. Once in a while, you know, dementia is a horrible <laughs> thing every week. But we work with it here at Sports Central. That's a part of our show that makes it so much fun. Well, Coach, um, this has got to be exciting for you to be starting a whole new program at Southeastern. They've never had football before, and uh, to be able to um, get a 3,500-seat stadium and, and get a team put together has got to be awful exciting for you. Well, we're tremendously excited about the whole venture. You know, it's something that, uh, you know, I've never done before. I have coached before, but I've never started a new program before. And uh, especially here in Central Florida, where their athletes just you know, just all over the state looking for places to play in college. Uh, I know I spent most of my coaching career uh, as a college coach and as we mentioned in Missouri and Oklahoma trying to convince young men from the state of Florida to, to head up there and, uh, you know, enjoy the snow in the winter and that type of thing. Now I like the opportunity to try to convince them just to stay right here so mom and dad can, can come and watch it. They don't have to worry about airplane flights. Well, this is a brand new program. Um, and I guess the question begs itself, who are you guys going to be playing? What, uh, it, is it NAIA, or, you know, it, is it NCAA? What, tell us a little bit about what's going on. Well, we're an NAIA program, mm -hmm. and as a university, we're a member of the Sun Conference, and mm -hmm. there are some schools already uh, participating in football or beginning to start football programs that are members of the Sun Conference. Uh, most notably, uh, right down uh, the road here is uh, Weber International. Mm -hmm. They're an NAI school and they've kind of been the Lone Ranger for a few years as far as NAI competition and they've been having to travel literally all over the country for, for games. Uh, but now uh, there's Ave Maria. Uh, they have a, a program and they've been uh, uh, competing for the, for the last year or so. And then of course this coming year Warner University is going to be competing and uh, and so they will start in in 2014 so that will give us four members of the Sun Conference that are competing in football you know four teams is not a schedule make uh, there'll be a couple of other things that uh, for what I understand the uh, commissioner is trying to uh, come in as an alliance member so that we can put together a, a football conference and for us six uh, members of a football playing conference is is important because at that point we would be able to receive a, an automatic bid for the national playoffs. We get an automatic qualifier mm. if one of our schools are ranked in the top 20 at the end of the season. And, and that's kind of what we all play for. I mean, we will play for conference championships, but the conference champions, they get to move on to the, uh, to the national playoffs. Now, how did you begin to recruit players? I mean, as I look at this list, you've got uh, quite a lineup of players and how did you go about recruiting them? Well, it's not the first year I've ever recruited. <laughs> okay, so, yeah, a little bit of a game plan so, on how to go uh, knock so, on the door and say, we want you. Well, and, and a, a part of my, uh, my history in college recruiting is I did spend quite a bit of time here in the state of Florida. Uh, I tell people that uh, 
when I was in uh, Springfield, people thought my hometown was Apopka, Florida, because we had so many players from Apopka over the years at, at our school and, and did well. But uh, I think a, a lot of the uh, signees that you see here uh, from this past week are as a result of you know relationships that I've built up over the years and coaches who have gotten in the habit of sending me their athletes and they like the product that we've produced over the years. And so when I had the opportunity to come down, uh, come down here, they were more than happy to send them a little bit closer home. Mm -hmm. And I think, uh, you know, also uh, Richie Marsh, who is a, a local uh, coach that uh, grew up here in Polk County in Bartow, mm -hmm. uh, you know, he, he has a lot of relationships down here. So he was able to, uh, to garner some of our signees this year that it really made a difference plus you see some of the georgia players that are on our uh, signing list you know uh, coach marsh was the last several years has been in the state of georgia at thomasville high school there so uh, those relationships that that we have built up in the past have have made up the the bulk of the signing list here now what we're going to do in the next months is to to uh, go and visit with all of the coaches especially here in polk county and the surrounding area uh, and uh, try to uh, impress them with what we're trying to do at uh, Southeastern and, and get more, more local kids. Well, National Signing Day was a few days ago, and um, you know, obviously to kind of paint an accurate picture here, the season for you is going to start in 2014, not 2013. So as you move forward, you're going to have a chance to look at some of these kids over the summer, well, late summer, and uh, of course next fall. So National Signing Day next year is going to be a big deal. It's going to be an important day. Every every sign every signing day is an important day. And one of the things that uh, when I was talking with the administration at Southeastern uh, about this program, they were kind of pointing towards maybe having the first signing class in 2014. And one of the things that that I mentioned to them, I said, you know, why put all your eggs in one basket? You know, let's let's go out and try to have get the best that we can get in, in 2013. Bring them here in the fall of 2013. Uh -huh. Get them involved in our uh, strength and conditioning program. We're able to practice with them. We can't uh, play any teams next year. We can't even scrimmage against another school. But we can practice. We can kind of get them in the routine. Yeah, they get can, your. They they can have a year okay. to grow I got you. academically and physically. And and then we have another recruiting class, and this this year, this time around, we'll have a lead up of at least from now till sign. We'll have a year to get okay. ready for signing date, and we'll have a year to to look at all these prospects. I'll be adding more coaches to my staff in the meantime, mm -hmm. and so we'll be able to get you know our machine, you might call it, in gear for for next year, and and uh, you know we'll have a. I think we'll have a good good run at uh, 2014 and having a pretty good product on the field. Well, it gives you a chance to let the the players get used to your playbook. You have an aggressive offense that you like to run, and and so being able to let the athletes start to get comfortable with that and figure out how you want to run an offense and and get them in rhythm to that. Because when you watch any game, the big thing when an offense is clicking, they've got a rhythm going. You know, the quarterback and the receivers, they've got their rhythm going. The run game's got a rhythm. But it takes a while for those players to understand the playbook, especially now. I don't know if you do a lot of audibles at the line, but that there's that too that they've got to learn. So the game gets pretty complicated and the more time that these kids can, you know, study the game and get prepared for it, you know, I think it's to your advantage so that, you know, when you do start a year from now in the fall of 14, they've had some time to play together and work out a lot of the kinks. Oh, absolutely. And, you know, I don't think my offense is the most complicated. It's real simple to me, but the thing is, is I've got to communicate that to the players who've never even been in my offense for for a day yet, mm -hmm. not even an hour. Uh, I've talked to some about 15 minutes about it, but that's about the length of our discussion. So I'm looking forward to that, getting in and getting them in, and uh, they're kind of getting into my mind as far as what offense is all about and me being able to get into theirs and, and we can kind of mesh things and get the timing down. But we'll start at a snail's pace, but I guarantee you, uh, when uh, August of uh, 2014 r rolls around, it'll be a lot more up tempo than that. Well, Coach, the, you know one of the things that uh, is always interesting about uh, visiting with new talent coming in is 
your background and part of your background, you were pastor for 12 years in the Assemblies of God <laughs> denomination. Well, I, I wouldn't call myself a, a pastor other than probably oh, with my football team. I guess I was kind of like a, uh, the football team's pastor, but I, I was a licensed minister, mm-hmm. and that's really uh, where I was, where I thought my life was headed. When I started college, I thought I would, you know, uh, be a pastor, yeah. and I uh, was a biblical studies major. Went to seminary, and then a funny thing happened away to the church. You caught a football. <laughs> I caught a football. <laughs> got, got that fever, and I haven't been able to kick it ever since. <laughs> so, did you, did you, you know, speaking of that type of thing, um, obviously the Apostle Paul talks a lot about sports. You know, he's kind of one of my favorites to. You know, using analogies and, and scripture and so on and so forth, um, running the way, the race to win and, and so on and so forth. Does that play a factor in your coaching? Well, you know, every day when we go out to practice and, and uh, you know, especially at uh, when I've been in situations like, like this where uh-huh. I've, I've coached at Christian high schools and Christian universities, you know, those ideals and, and those types of things definitely uh, are to the forefront. Now, you know, when you're at a state university, it's a little bit different, and, and uh, you have to kind of let your, your light shine, so to speak, on how you conduct yourself every day and let them see and under, understand. So yeah. it's more of a, an unspoken word at that time. But when you're talking about uh, in a situation here where we don't have to uh, worry about our expression, uh, that's definitely going to be uh, uh, the types of things that, that we'll be talking about and speaking about. And when you talk about the, the Apostle Paul, my favorite one is, is I press towards the mark. And that's what we want to do. We, we're going to, we started it uh, here in December when they hired me on, and we're going to be pressing all the way until 214 is when it uh, kinds of, uh, kind of gets uh, to, a, to a crescendo, but we're just going to keep it going from there. Very cool. Well, there's more to it than just uh, the football aspect of X's it. X's uh, the X's and O's, yeah, there's, because uh, the, at a Christian school you can have the spiritual development as well in the team, but you're also there for people to get an education, and I think that's an important thing for everybody to understand as well. Well, the, you know, I guess, you know, what, uh, I have a three-point sermon, and since, since you mentioned, I, you know, I was a minister, I had a three-point sermon. There's three things that I'm looking for in an athlete. And, and, and they all start with C. Number one, I want a champion for Christ. I, we're going to stand for what all that means. And number two, I want a champion in the classroom. And, and we want what all that stands for. We want, we want to have, if we can, we're competitive. We're going to try to be, have the highest GPA of, of everybody, every group in the school. The football players, it may not happen, but we're sure going to do our best to, to get there. And then the other thing is, you know, uh, we want champions out there in competition, and when we when we hit the field, we want to be the best. And if we got people that are living up to the first two, I don't think I have to worry about what's going to happen about on the football on the field. field. Okay. Well, everybody, it's time to uh, take a little bit of a break here. We'll be back with Coach right after this. Stick around. Hey everybody and welcome back to PGTV Sports Central. I'm Mark Jackson, my co-host Mr. Hank Longo and as promised we're bringing back the brand new coach of the Southeastern Fire, Keith Bearfield and what a challenge he is up against here yeah. but I think he's a man for the uh, for the task Hank. This Thank is awesome. Man for the job and uh, exciting because uh, as we talked earlier, you're going to be playing in the NAIA, am I correct with that? And, and then we've got Warner, and s- to kind of recap on some of the local teams that you'll be playing with and how this division is building right here in Central Florida. Well, we have right here in Polk County, we have Weber International, we have Warner University, and then in 2014 we'll be joining them, uh, competing right here in, in this county, and then of course you got Ave Maria. Uh, on the other side of the state, and uh, so we're we're looking 
looking forward to uh, to competing in the conference. And there are other a couple of other schools that are NEI schools uh, here in Florida that uh, we'll be looking forward to. Hopefully, maybe bringing them into an alliance with us, and we can form a football. Uh, conference. Now will you be um, traveling to other states as well? Will they get a little road trip in here and there? No doubt about it. If we want a 10 or 11 game schedule we'll, we'll be traveling up into uh, you know potentially uh, well all throughout the southeast you know uh, we may go, go as far over as uh, Mississippi uh, possibly into Louisiana then you have uh, uh, teams in Alabama, Georgia uh, you know, possibly in the Carolinas and Virginia. So uh, that's that's kind of the the big picture. Uh, we'd like to make as few of those as possible. You know, we'd like for, to invite as many of those teams to come down here in beautiful Florida to to enjoy our scenery and our hospitality. Uh, I think they would enjoy it. Yeah. Well, one of the, one of the things that I find so interesting is is the fact that you're starting a new program. You've got to be competitive right off the bat because you're going to be facing teams. I mean, right here locally that have had some experience. Yeah. I mean, Weber's been around for, what, three or four years now, yeah. I guess, um, have developed a pretty good program over there. But you're no stranger to challenges. I mean, you've uh, you had the opportunity, you know, as Hank was talking about, in the, in the travel area to uh, actually go to China, taking a football team to China <laughs> and, and so on. So the travel isn't going to be so much of an issue, but, you know, playing unfamiliar teams is. That's, that's tough. Cause you, it's hard to study game tape or... You know, and if you don't have experience facing them, it's a little bit different. Well, probably the biggest advantage that we have of playing new teams is that we'll be even newer. So they won't really know what to expect. What, what to do. expect from us? Little, little Cleveland's out the playing field. I don't, I don't. I don't know if we'd be able to, uh, you know, screen in all of our practice and practice fields. Uh, when I was in Oklahoma, all we had were wheat fields, and people could sit miles and miles away from us. And if they had a scope strong enough, they could have watched our practices. But you know, we'll we'll have maybe a little bit of an advantage. But I think uh, if I had a, a choice, I would have rather have had a program here, you know, for a few years because we have everything down. Everything's going to be new to us, and we'll be breaking down film and and uh, getting the scouting reports on all the teams that we play. And, and you know, that's that's a part of the. You know things that you don't see as non-coaches and non-participants on the team, but you know that that's a part of the the fun thing about football. Is you go in, you break down the film, you formulate your game plan, you, you put your strategy together, mm -hmm. you communicate it to your kids, you work on it Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, you kind of wrap it up on Friday and you go out and play on you Saturday. Take it to the field on Saturday and hope it all works. And you get to see how they pass the exam. Yeah, now <laughs> um, with your aggressive offense, are, are you a passing team? Do you pass more or are you more of a running team? I think probably until 2007 people said, you know, Coach Bearfield likes to throw the ball and he'll throw it around and, and he's, a, he's a pass first person. Then I went to Oklahoma, and you know the little song, you know, the wind blows gently down the plain? It don't always blow gently. Usually it's about a 20 to 25 mile an hour wind on Saturdays in the fall. So half the time you're going to be facing that. That is not kind of the thing you want to see as a, as a passing you game. You know, and coach. that's an interesting comment that you say that, because I don't think a lot of people watching TV understand that. Uh, like when you get in these outdoor. Uh, football arenas you know and and you've got a wind to contend with uh that makes it a whole different well there's a, <laughs> yeah i mean you're sitting in, a, in your house in 72 degrees and you know the only breeze you feel is from a ceiling fan it's hard to identify yeah, that it's like i can lift the ball and move it around and i mean when you watch these plays these quarterbacks are just dropping it in there i mean how they can do that is amazing to me but to to then have to deal with the win, it makes it a, a different challenge, that's for sure. Well, especially when you're facing, you know, what, what to me is a gale force wind. Yeah. But uh, I made up my mind early there, we're gonna have to run the ball, we're gonna be a lot more physical. Yeah. So what I've been able to do over the previous, or the last five years, is really add a dimension to, to our offense that I think has uh, made our offense better because we run a lot, lot more physical type of an offense. Plus, we uh, are still able to run our, our up-tempo passing game. So uh, that's kind of what I bring to the table. And so we'll, we'll see how it works here in Central Florida. Well, I think probably the biggest thing, you know, at least that I've heard down here, and I, hadn't, you know, I didn't play football down in, in Florida, any of that type of stuff, but the heat. 
you know, the, the, there's not really much of a wind factor, but the heat at that time of the year is, is different. And mm -hmm. hopefully the kids, you're recruiting from locally here, they're used to it, you know. But you go up to Green Bay, Wisconsin, for example, you know, yeah, you're lucky right. it's a high 65 degrees, degrees there, yeah, in September, shorts. you know. It's, it's, <laughs> it's a totally different, different ball. Of course, Texas isn't exactly a, you know, ice box either you know so <laughs> the plains of oklahoma and missouri and and so on with that wind that's interesting yeah there are no gulf breezes in oklahoma no i can tell you that <laughs> <laughs> now coach you took a uh, a little time off while your kids played football how was that experience for you well i'm one person i, I don't know how many people out there that are coaches that, that have had that experience but uh, i've had the opportunity to coach uh, my sons in, in middle school, in high school, and college. And, wow. uh, and so I, I guess, you know, I, I kind of did things a little bit backwards. I started out as a college coach and I worked my way up to a head coaching position, was the head coach at Evangel University for 10 years. My uh, oldest son at that time was going into middle school and I realized that I would not be able to watch him play because I would be practicing while he would be playing. And I didn't want to miss that. And that, that's, you know, you, you, only, you only do this uh, uh, father thing one time. You, you, only, you only have really one good chance. So I didn't want to miss out on those things. So I left college coaching and uh, tried my hand, started out as a, a middle school coach down in uh, Shreveport, Louisiana. Oh. And uh, uh, we went undefeated. We went 8-0 <laughs> we uh, that year. And then uh, was was there. Then I got a call from San Antonio, Texas, about an opportunity there at a high school, and I took it. And, and we we moved there, and I had had a chance to coach him uh, for three years there. And then we came back to uh, Shreveport. I was asked to coach Arena, and uh, a friend of mine bought a team, and and I went back and only with the stipulation that I could also help coach with the high, local high school team there. So I I did that, and uh, so. After that, my oldest son actually, he signed with the University of Memphis and played quarterback for them for two years. And after the second year, I was able to get the opportunity in Oklahoma to get back into college coaching. I took it. My oldest son transferred and my youngest son signed with me right out of high school. So I coached them for two and four years there at uh, Northwestern. So wow. it's been a, been a great experience and I wouldn't, I wouldn't change it for anything. And, and uh, especially since uh, it's led us here, you know, we're totally excited to be here. Priorities. Fantastic, yeah. yeah. How was it coaching your sons, though? Did you treat them just like any that. other took the words kid right out, out of, of team? Mouth. <laughs> <laughs> I was, I was, it all, it all depends if you're talking to me or maybe some of the other parents. Uh, but it was one of those things, you know, if it was G coach, that's got to be tough. I said, yeah it's, yeah, it's tough, but as long as you win, you can handle a lot of things. And we, we were able to, to win during that time. Uh, my, uh, my oldest son, he had three state championship rings from two states, two from Texas and one from Louisiana. Oh, my god! And so my, my youngest son, he had uh, two state championship uh, rings from Louisiana. So, so from, from that aspect, everything was, was, was really, really good. Uh, but from the personal aspect, I was probably harder on my own kids. Well, that's, that's the same thing with me, though. You know, it was coaching Nick in baseball or, you know, you're coaching him skiing or whatever. I was always harder on my own kid because I didn't never wanted anybody saying, "Hey, you're you're easier, so you know, you're giving them preferential treatment." treatment. Yeah. No, it was in fact it was just the opposite. And and so, well, sometimes when I would be uh, speaking in my coaching voice outside, mm -hmm. if you if you understand what I mean, uh, yeah. I would I would I would be looking and talking at him, but I'd say, "Son, I'm really meaning it for that guy over there. I want him to hear it because yeah. I don't I don't I can't talk to him that way." But I think the very important thing, if there are fathers out there who are, who are coaching their kids, the most important thing is, is coach them on the field, but when you're off the field and you go home, you're dad. You don't, you don't take it with you, yet you're able to separate it. So I was, I was coach on the field, I was dad everywhere else. Well, that's great. 
Okay. Wow, some very good enlightenment there that you don't get to, to hear very often. Yeah, that's, you know, Southeastern's got a, a certainly a good bright insight. future, and we congratulate you. This is good stuff. Man, it's awesome. Looking forward to it. We have to get out there and check out some practices. Yeah, yeah. Wishing you Maybe the best. you can be a tackling dummy or something. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe you can be a goalpost. Yeah. <laughs> I'll kick that one a it's little. Hey, it's all good. It's all good. <laughs> all good. Coach Bearfield, thanks so much for joining us. Thank we, you. we appreciate thanks, it. We're going to have you back because uh, we want to get an update here closer towards the uh, the fall season, kind of see how the team's going to start to shape up, the talent shaping up, the recruiting shaping up. I think that's all good stuff. Well, thank you very much. I look forward to it. Well, we're glad to have you in Florida, and uh, I'm not so sure that, that folks over at Warner and, and of course, Q-Q-Cola, over at uh, let's, yeah, let's make competition. Gonna, at, at Weber are going to be too happy about it, but uh, we are, and that's what counts. Well, we meaning the citizens of Mm -hmm. Polk County. Yeah. Thanks so much. Thank you. All righty. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we've had uh, sort of an unusual opportunity. It's been an exciting opportunity to to talk with uh, Keith Bearfield, the new head coach of the Southeastern Fire. And, uh, Hank, that's... uh, you know, it really speaks volumes. This is good stuff mm-hmm. for Polk County, Polk County Definitely. sports. But I'll tell you one thing, I think it's going to enhance the opportunity to recruit kids for Southeastern, for Warner, and for Weber, which has found out that their uh, size of their classes have gone up. Yeah. But it's, uh, it's a good thing economically, and too. we've got so much local talent. I mean, we're yeah. just a melting pot for it. Absolutely. And a new stadium they're planning at Southeastern. Exciting, exciting stuff. Well, let me know.